everyone, today I wanted to walk you through the entire process from start to finish of getting a resin 3D print up and running. And to do this, I'm gonna be 3D printing this Xenomorph Alien model by ET Model Studio that I believe, if I remember correctly, I ended up 3D modeling this directly on their iPad using Nomad Sculpt, which is just unreal. So obviously you're gonna need a 3D file that you wanna print something with detail. That's what resin 3D printing is all about, which is why I picked this one here. And sometimes just like this designer here, they offer pre-supported file options for you to work with when it comes to resin 3D printing. However, I'm gonna walk you through the entire process of how I handle supporting my resin 3D prints. Now, how big you wanna 3D print this in is gonna really dictate how large of a resin 3D printer you have, or if you wanted to break this up into multiple parts. However, I'm gonna try and keep this with the original files that they've provided and just fit those into the build volumes of my 3D printers. And to do that, I'm gonna be working with the Elegoo Mars 5 Ultra and the Elegoo Saturn 4 Ultra and the Elegoo Saturn 4. This should provide me with a lot of build volume and I should hopefully be able to finish 3D printing these in the next day or two. The first thing that you're gonna do is open up your slicer. I'm using Cheetu Box Basic, which is the free version of Cheetu Box. You can use Lychee Slicer or any other resin 3D printing slicer that you're interested in. You can start bringing in your files and seeing how those might fit into the build volume of the 3D printer that you're working with. Now I can see that these parts are too large for even the Elegoo Saturn 4 Ultra. So I'm gonna have to scale these down slightly using the scale function. I set this to about 90% scale for all of the parts. Then I can start the fun process of trying to orient these within the build volume of the 3D printer before I can get them hollowed and supported. Now, when it comes to orientation, I try to make sure that the detail area or main focal point is not going to be interacted with support. So this means it's going to be typically facing outward or upward away from the base of the 3D printer that you can see on screen. There are also auto orientation functions inside some of these slicers that you can try using to help you with this process. In general, I typically just try to orient these as best as I can. You also see where I'm rotating some of these models so that the larger portion of the model is towards the bottom area so that can be better supported versus a thinner area that's touching the build plate and supporting from that, which isn't gonna provide you with a lot of structure when it prints this large object. Next, we're gonna wanna hollow out these files so that we're not using up all of our resin and that they're not super heavy while printing. Typically, I usually set this to about 1.8, depending on the size and scale of the model. Something like this that's gonna print fairly large, yeah, 1.8 should be fine. But if you're talking about a miniature or some kind of figurine that's gonna be really small, you can probably go a lot smaller than this. Now, here's one of the most important parts. Now that you've hollowed out your models, you need to add drain holes to these. I can't stress this enough. If you don't add drain holes to your prints, these will end up failing. You also need to make sure that you have drain holes towards the bottom of your model or else, again, there could be suction action that could happen here and your prints will end up failing. In general, I try to add as many holes as I can throughout this. Wherever I see spots where there's gonna be an armature that's connecting to one part from the next, I'll typically add holes there or in the very bottom section where, again, it's gonna be closest to the build plate, I try to find a discrete area that I can add some holes to those areas. And at minimum, you need at least two holes in your model. And as for the size, these completely vary depending on the part that I'm working on, but I typically don't go lower than two millimeters. On average, I'm typically working between three and five millimeters, unless it's the very bottom of a part that's a flat area, I'll typically go with something like 10 or 20. And now that you've got your models oriented, hollowed, and holes placed in them, we can start the process of supporting. I personally, typically almost all the time, use the auto support function, both within Cheetu Box and within Lychee Slicers, and then manually remove or add supports as needed throughout the models. I'll typically go with the default 45 degree overhang or lower that down to about 30 degrees and then have those supports auto-generated. These default support options that come in both Lychee and Cheetu Box are really good starting points if you're just getting started with resin 3D printing before you go in and start refining and setting up your own supports. And I typically work with the light support option with the auto function and then we'll go through and start adding some medium supports in key areas where I wanna just add a little bit more connectivity to the part to the base where it's gonna be printing. This really helps keep everything in place when it's printing. And you don't need a lot of these, just a few key ones in some of the low areas of the print. And since we're printing a Xenomorph, I figured the best color for us to print with is black resin. And for me, black resin is notoriously difficult to work with. And to make this even more complicated, I'm gonna be working with this Prusament resin. This is their black rich resin, which is a really, again, rich black resin that I'm excited to print with. And I've not worked with that on any of these resin 3D printers. So I'm just gonna use the default 
default settings that come with the slicer and might tweak the bottom exposure ever so slightly and just let it rip. And this is the beauty of these Elegoo resin 3D printers. Not only are they really easy to work with, but at this point I can pretty much throw any resin at them and just use some of these basic settings and they'll actually print properly. Now this is where I wanna say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, which is Elegoo, the creators of the Elegoo Mars 5 Ultra, the Elegoo Saturn 4, and the Elegoo Saturn 4 Ultra. And I'm loving how simple these resin 3D printers are getting. And specifically the Mars 5 Ultra and the Saturn 4 Ultra Ultra with their tilting vat mechanisms, you only have three settings that you ever have to worry about when setting up your resin 3D printing profiles. This makes getting prints like this set up and running so easy, but they also have their standard Saturn IV, which also prints beautifully and works just like all the other resin 3D printers that you might be familiar with. Elegoo is also running a big fall sale on Amazon on some of their 3D printers, including the Saturn IV and the Neptune III Max. For more information about any of Elegoo's products, you can find links to those down below. And these prints are turning out amazing in this black resin on these three 3D printers. And could I have gotten better results by further fine tuning the resin profiles and running tests and calibration prints? Sure, but as long as these look good, I'm happy and that's all that matters. Now, after you've gotten your prints removed from the build plate, you're gonna to need to get the supports removed and then you can get those prints cleaned in isopropyl alcohol. Once those prints are fully air dried, you can begin the process of curing those under a UV light. Now, if you don't have a UV curing chamber like this, you can just set your prints out in the sun to get some of that UV goodness. Now, one other key part of this model is actually the visor that goes over the Xenomorph's head that needs to be printed in clear resin. And to do that, I'm gonna be printing with Sorytex Simple Clear resin, which again is another resin that I have not worked with on these 3D printers. So I'm going to load this up on the Mars 5 Ultra and get that printing. Now this turned out amazing. And the trick here, you'll see how clear this is. It's like crystal clear. The challenge is retaining that clarity after getting this cleaned up or even removing those supports because there's going to be little scar marks there. So we're going to try two different methods for achieving that and seeing which works the best for this. First option we're going to take is going to be to clean these in isopropyl alcohol and then cure it. And the second, I'm actually going to dunk <laughs> inside the bottle of resin. This is the resin that I used here just to give it a little bit of an extra coating there. And what we're going to end up doing is just directly curing this in the UV chamber. But first, I'm going to let it sit there and drip dry before we cure it. Then we can put the prints in some UV light and let them cure. Now, since they're clear, you don't need to leave them in there for very long, maybe one to two minutes max. And you'll see both of our prints here. This is the one that we washed with IPA and cured. It's already nice and cloudy, but we're gonna try and take care of that with a little bit of wet sanding. And since this is a resin 3D print and already really smooth, I'm gonna start at 600 grit and work my way up. Then I'm gonna use this 1K clear coat on all of the prints. First up is the wash and cured print. Second is the dipped in resin and cured print. And third is our washed and cured and then wet sanded print. All right, it's been a full 24 hours since we painted these and I figured let's check out the results of them. They're looking really nice and glossy here. The first one that we're taking a look at, this is the one that was cleaned with isopropyl alcohol, UV cured, and then we just sprayed this and it actually looks pretty good. It's, it's fairly clear to see through. Obviously there's some imperfections where you can see the support marks on the underside from where I had that supported, but in general, this looks pretty good. Next is the one that we dunked inside of the resin. This was not cleaned in isopropyl alcohol. It was just dunked back in the same resin that we printed it in. And then we UV cured it and then applied some of this spray paint to it. And it's again, looking pretty good, but it's kind of bubbly and kind of bulky looking from where I think the, the resin where I dunked it back in just sort of dripped into itself and didn't really smooth out so much. Now this one obviously is gonna be the one that had the best results. This is the one that I spent 
spent, I don't know, five to 10 minutes wet sanding going from 600 grit up to 2000 grit. This one is easily the clearest out of all of them and is the one that I'm gonna be using. This looks so good. So, so good. Also interesting enough, this one is still kind of tacky versus these other two are more or less dry to touch. So in a perfect world scenario, I'd probably give this, you know, two days, two to three days to fully cure before handling. So after cleaning and curing all of your parts, you should end up with a set of three prints that look something like this that you can now start assembling together. One thing you also might notice is that I don't have the base for the Xenomorph for it to actually sit on. And I ended up actually 3D printing that on my Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus 3D printer at a 0.2 layer height. And this turned out so good. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted something that was going to be a little bit more solid and had a little bit more heft to it so that this wouldn't so easily tip over. And now that I'm actually looking at all the parts here, I'm thinking it might actually be a little bit easier for me to dry brush and paint these before assembling them all together. And to get these all painted, we're going to end up using a technique that I showed off in a previous video where we're just going to be applying a light dry brush technique over all of these black prints, which should help all those details details really pop. And in fact, I'm also using this dry brush palette. That's a 3D printable palette that you can find over online that I created previously that I'll have linked below. And basically all you do is take a little bit of paint and get it on the end of a brush. And here I'm just using some makeup brushes that you can find from the dollar store and then very lightly applying it to the brush and then knocking off most of the paint so that you're just lightly dusting that paint over your print. What we're doing is just really painting the highlights in the high areas of your object that you're painting. And for the Xenomorph head, I kind of want to add different color contrast here, not just black and this whitish silverish that I've been going with. I want this to look a little bit more skull-like, so we're going to be using some lighter shades of uh, pigment here to try to accent that and make it pop a little bit more while it's underneath the visor. And again, just more or less going to be dry brushing the paint onto the area here. I'm not really looking to fully coat any of these areas with paint. I'm actually really liking how that darker brown is looking, but when it's brushed on very faintly here over the the white or the silver that I was going with. So I might just do over a light coating of that over all of the entire print. Again, just to help make a little bit more varying contrast in the colors that we're seeing on the skin of the Xenomorph. And then we just need to get everything assembled. And for this, I'm just gonna use some super glue, which works so well with resin 3D prints. Not entirely sure why, but everything just adheres really quickly and is really solid. And here is our fully finished resin 3D printed Xenomorph that I took you through the process from start to finish of getting this sliced to 3D printed, to cleaned up, to actually getting this painted and assembled. This looks so good. I am so happy with the results of how this turned out. I'm really happy with the color combination as well. I'm really happy that I applied some of that darker brown over the entire coating of the print there. I think it really helped knock back some of the brightness from the white or the silver that I was using there and gave it a much more organic alien looking effect. Also that clear resin 3D print looks amazing on top of this head here. In fact, even those other ones look pretty good on top of this. So even if you don't even go through the entire process of wet sanding and spraying it down, you could still end up with a pretty good looking print result here as you can see with some of these other variations. And I don't even have the print fully secured to the base, which is printed on the Neptune 4 Plus. And it just sort of sits here with its tail spikes into the base and it sits ever so nicely there. But I think I'm going to end up super gluing this all together because I am so nervous that I'm going to knock this over and end up breaking it all. And if there is one thing that I could change on this entire print is giving it some kind of a wet look to the overall finish. If you have any suggestions on how I can go about doing that, let me know in the comments down below. I really want this to look super creepy. I also want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. If you're interested in things like my resin 3D printer settings that I use for my resin 3D printers, you can find those over in my Patreon. But hopefully this video helps some of you out there that are just getting started with resin 3D printing or are interested in more about how I go about resin 3D printing, some of the things that I show off in a lot of my videos. For me, this was just a really fun excuse to go through the entire process 
and actually end up finishing something that I 3D print. I 3D print so many things and never end up actually painting and finishing them. So I'm really, really happy with the results of this. Now I just need to figure out somewhere cool that I can put it on display. Hey, thanks so much for watching you all and I'll see you next time.